Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Yep, black horse, black at it again. Asking you to hit that share button because the message is more important than the messenger. You've already heard this before. Um, and uh, uh, there's, uh, it, before I start the meat of the message, um, I would like to ask uh, Obsidian if it is okay if I write under this name, Blackheart, uh, occasionally for the Negro Manosphere. I can't guarantee that I would be doing it a lot, but uh, Obsidian, if you hear this, let me know if it's okay, or even if it's not, because I would understand either way. Uh, shout out to um, Saracen Alid Moore, to Dwight Hayes, to uh, Abdullah Tayyip, Abdullah bin Babi Tayyip, uh, shout out to Alan Harper, Man of Tomorrow, Don Calypso. Uh, did I say BGS already? O'Shea Duke Jackson, uh, Angry Man. Shout out to these gentlemen for helping me to come to realize a lot, uh, even to a lady um, video vlogger. Uh, Want to give her my thanks. She goes under the name Light Skin Love. It used to be Light Skin Tears. Um, she did help me to understand some things about that I hadn't realized about the reverse colorism in the community. Um, although I'm still red pill, I'm I actually I'm the real black pill, um, and she's not. She ain't going to be. Maybe she, she can't because it's not in her interest. But I'd like to thank them for the parts that they played in another awakening that I had. Now this being said. I'm mainly going to have to give a shout out to Bilal Abdullah. He, pro he pronounces it Bilal Abdullah. Um, of the uh, Muslim and Black in America series. And that's what this message is about. Why am I both red pill and Muslim? Um, that's, it could be a very long answer. And I try oftentimes to give a short answer even when the question therefore its answer are complex and therefore long but I do so by explaining that there is a whole lot to the answer that I cannot cover in the time that I'm willing to take in the time I even have to take for this recording I cannot include everything in here so there's going uh, there will be at least one comment about something that I missed because I could not cover it not because I did not care as a Muslim it is against my belief that God hates either gender. Um, but I, when I first became Muslim, I began to hear, as a matter of fact, shortly before becoming Muslim, I began to hear certain verses like um, the majority of the inhabitants of hellfire being women and that it was due to specifically their ingratitude for what good men had done for them in their lives. Um, and I'm not saying that it's all about how they felt about a man, but the thing is that ingratitude on anybody's part, when they were able to observe the good someone did for them, will lead them to commit other sins. And it will lead them to not only commit other sins, but specifically other sins that have victims to them, another living victim, not just a sin against God, but a sin also against the rights of someone or something else, like even an animal for that matter. And if they don't forgive you one judgment day, you're going to burn, you're going to roast. If I'm not forgiven for things I've done wrong to other people on judgment day, I'm likely to burn and roast. Regular or extra crispy. And uh, that's why I try to avoid doing wrong to folks. So if I do or say something you don't like or it offends you, I've thought it through. And I've reached the conclusion that to not do something that you don't like is worse than to do something that you don't like. In other words, chances are somebody else's right that is at stake if I don't do this as far as I know and as far as I can observe. So when I go hard on women and I don't go hard on men uh, on YouTube as publicly, it is because I have assessed that by staying silent about the games that many women play, especially Western women, I will be doing men much more harm. So I'm Muslim and I'm still uh, part of what you would call the red pill community. 
actually black, the real black pill, not what the white guys call the black pill, but the real black pill. And then that's pretty much um, what black men really were before white boys came up with this term red pill and applied it uh, or, or took red pill and applied it to mean aware of um, the financial, legal and social situation surrounding men, especially as it relates to getting involved with women. And the best describe that, as far as I know, that would be Ibmore. And I had a talk with my wife about what was going on in, in the community. She is from the Horn of Africa. She spent part of her childhood in the United States. She is a practicing Muslim, and she's serious about it. And I can take that positive influence from her without losing who I am, but rather I can use that to improve who I am. I could have done that from anyone. To be honest, I mean, I could have done it from anyone who was willing to take it as seriously as she was and vice versa. Um, and when we had this talk, she said, well, let me tell you what's happening in our community. And she began to mention uh, the men that were losers and the men that were just looking even for single mothers uh, so that they could stay with these single moms. Um, because these men weren't going to sit up and buy property on their own and settle down and put down roots. And I said to her, well, it sounds like what's going on in your community especially its diaspora, is exactly what happened in our community. And I listened to it because she had the right to tell me she was talking. And it was one thing, though, that I had to get on her about. It wasn't what she was telling me. If that's what's going on in her community, she knows. She's telling me. She's not wrong for giving me information just because it doesn't flatter men. But when I would answer her, I would start to give her an answer or to ask a question even. And she would sometimes cut me off as I was answering her question or asking a question or explaining the similarities and differences without rancor, without hatred, just giving uh, what I knew to be the similarities and differences based on what she said. And she would stop me at times, cut me off. And I had to stop her a few times and say, you didn't let me finish. I'm not trying to take forever. I want to hear you out, but you're going to hear me out first. And that's the one thing that I had to get on her about. It's not because she's a bad person, but that's because it is a bad habit with, with which most human beings are socialized. Cut them off, out talk them, don't let them finish because you don't agree. We hear this on the live streams a lot of times in these panels. I mean, good, goodness gracious, man, Taz is a good example of that. Now I've heard Edward Anderson talk very long, but I've also heard him say, I want you to finish. But we've heard it when Taz would just cut folks off. The only time I ever said anything bad about Obsidian was for that, because <laughs> he was cutting people off. I didn't know that his channel was um, as much for entertainment as it was for education. I was unaware. But at the time I heard him do it, he was on someone else's channel. And that was why I said, well, what is this dude doing? I didn't really know much about him, except here's this guy on someone else's channel just cutting people off all the time, shouting over them with the echo box. And I thought... Man, this is a nigga. I didn't know actually how reasonable he is when you take turns talking. But what I've come to understand is that if you when I had to tell her, stop trying to interrupt me. I didn't finish. She would say, but this point is not I'm going to hear that point out when I finish this one, because you may and you and I may actually be saying the same thing. But you won't know if you don't hear me out. I'm going to make the point. And I'm going to shut up and hear you out. We're going to take turns and I have to keep on asserting this over her. And this is not because she's a bad person, as I said. This is because of a socialization that a lot of us have. But usually if I say to a man, I want us to take turns. In many cases, these men, I'm talking about with black men. They will say, OK, all right, we'll take turns. When I'm dealing with Western women and white men and Arab Bedouins, I don't get that. They think it is perfectly OK to cut people off. And I'm going to say this about pretty much everybody. I'm not smart enough to interrupt most people if they have read some information about what they're talking about. But I'm also going to say this. These two groups are not smart enough. Um, these groups that I just mentioned are not smart enough to interrupt me. Unless it's to say, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the last words you said, or I'm sorry, I think you transposed these two digits when you gave the year like you, you said 1984 and that happened in 1948 
or uh, excuse me, there's a car headed for you right now. Other outside of that, you, the ones I just mentioned, ain't smart enough to just go cut me off. It ain't because I'm a genius. It's simply because I'm willing to read and give the information after I have read it. I'm willing to, to give the information after I have seen the evidence to support it. And I would at least say I realize I can't prove it to you, but I did witness a copy of the proof. I witnessed this happen or I witnessed this evidence, although I don't have it on videotape to show you. So you don't have to take my word for it. Just know that somebody who usually has spoken the truth can tell you that they saw evidence of it for whatever it's worth. It's simply because I'm careful. What I've observed is that when you, told, you hold that woman, you hold that mirror up, even to women that are accountable and who would avoid doing these things themselves, which is what I expected. Or I should say, which is what, which is that for which I was prepared anyway, in case it happened. You can take a woman that has a sense of accountability and it has a sense of responsibility and you hold, you simply hold that mirror up to other women and they will say, whoa, hold on. It's not the same when I as a man listen to a woman hold up the mirror of kind of accountability to men and then after she's done I step in and I say hold up in order to hold this mirror up you got to hold this other mirror up too and let also them see I can tell you why this is going on even if I wouldn't do it and this I can tell you why it's going to continue happening even if I'm not the one doing this stuff I'll have a talk with these guys about their accountability when we meet face to face it's different it is not the same Right now, this is a time where men have to hold the mirror up to Western women or just quietly not even hold the mirror up and just walk the F off and ditch them for others. And as I've said, passport cons or, or passport bots, I'm sorry, passport bots leave, roll out loudly and proudly. The reason I've said it is because many of us have daughters that are still in the matrix and these daughters need to know why it is that dad got his passport, packed his bags and fought the guck out the West. Financially, mentally, and sexually, and romantically. Why is it the dad had me with this woman from the U.S., and then, even though he loves me as a dad, he got up and he bounced. The daughters left behind need a fair chance to understand what is going on. Because if we simply just quietly dipped out, which I understand the reason for in the short term, the fact is that in the long term, these daughters of ours young daughters who deserve a fair chance to become good uh, and, and at least to become decent on their own and who deserve a fair shot at not being um, simply socialized into the dysgenic mating would not have a chance. They wouldn't have a shot. Because see, when we do bounce out and we got daughters, you know doggone well, most of the time we're not allowed to leave with our daughters. Can't do it. So what winds up happening, she, be, she has to stay with moms and she gets socialized. And when she stays with mom and she gets socialized, she gets socialized into the same dysgenic breeding. He's whack. He's lame. Even though he may simply just be normal and avoiding trouble, he's whack and he's lame. He's not exciting. And now let's say that he stays out of trouble, but he's developed some exciting interest. However, he's developed them on his own because he was single at that time, right? Well, his interests are still lame. He likes to skydive. I don't know, black folks don't generally do high risk stuff like that, but let's say somebody does develop that. He likes to skydive. Two parachutes, an extra one for safety. They've taken precautions, but he likes to do that. And, and, you know, real niggas don't skydive. Real niggas don't jump out of planes, even with five parachutes. OK. All right. So what interest is he supposed to have? He's supposed to have interests that you can show off to your narrow minded ass friends, even if they are professional women them, themselves and very highly educated. You still got to have interests that you can show off to them that justify him being seen as a real nigga. We're dealing with a situation in which our daughters could be socialized into this foolishness and continue the downward spiral. Now, we don't want to have any hand in this downward spiral, do we, brothers? We may pull out. The community may downwardly spiral without us, but we do not want to knowingly leave them an option to use our seeds, our daughters, to continue this downward spiral for another generation, right? We want to avoid this. And unfortunately, 
um, this is why it is that, that many of us have to be what's called Red Pill or Ibmore or even CISBIM. We're forced to. So I need to make this very clear as to why it is that a Muslim, a practicing Muslim who's serious, I'm not saying I'm that good, but why would a serious and practicing Muslim who doesn't take this religion as a joke go this route? It's very simple. Ladies, you choose. It's always been up to the women. It's always been up to them. If they choose to act according to a low and base nature at the expense of, of decency, i.e. letting men raise their own kids and not someone else's, uh, i.e. not looking specifically for indecent traits in a man to decide that he's worthy enough to not die a virgin. If they're going to uh, act in, in accordance to the, uh, against this, if, if this is too much for them, then, well, yeah, they sat up here and they have justified it. They have made um, this red pill philosophy and this red pill idea is true. Salam alaikum, shalonak. That's what they did. It was up to them. It always was up to them, and they made their choice. It wasn't about, uh, wasn't about what I wanted. It wasn't just about my opinion. It was about what I could rightly observe looking them in their faces. That's why. I should have done this a long time ago. See, when I first became Muslim, I heard some of these hadith. They, can't lead, uh, um, they cannot lead the Friday prayers unless it's only for women. They cannot... Um, they cannot be uh, imams of the masajid and the prayer centers. They cannot, um, pretty much they cannot be an authority over men at the level of national, uh, uh, national government outside of being ministers. But they certainly could not be um, the emir in charge of all of the ministers of the different government departments. Why can they not have this? Why is this not allowed? Now, after watching their behavior before and after being a Muslim, I can honestly say I get it now. I understand it's not because of how I feel about it. It's not simply just to be old fashioned and patriarchal. It is because there are things they're just simply not going to do. Why are they not allowed to be judges in court cases? I mean, arbitrators, I don't know of any prohibition on that, but judges in a court case, why are they not allowed to be? Well, look, let's check this out. For all this time, Nobody, all this time, we've had female judges in the U.S. and, you know, for decades, and they have not ruined the system completely. I mean, not, there, was, there haven't, hasn't been any overnight revolution by which they've ruined everything, right? But what happened? What did we see this last week, huh? We saw Amber Geiger get the verdict read out, and then after the verdict was read to her, what did, not only the bailiff, forget about that, what did the judge do? The judge is now being censured by other white folks for what? She's being censured by other white folks because of something that, um, something she did that was unprofessional in becoming of a judge, period. And even other white judges are saying, you don't do stuff like that. That's not how this works. Even though she didn't have anything to do with the sentencing, the jury did. There was still a judge in this case. And she did something unprofessional by their own standards. Because of what? Ask her why she did it. You know what? One of the reasons why that uh, why a Muslim male is not only justified in becoming what's called red pill uh, or immoral, but actually should be, to be honest with you, is simple. What have women said? What have women that talk to the manosphere been saying lately? Well, women follow the power. OK, well, what happens when the power is wrong? There you go. You follow the power. Well, it is men's job to make sure that the power is right. We failed, but we did try in many cases. So since you just follow the power, then, and that means that your, your uh, hunger for power and privilege does not come with any sort of morality attached to it, well then that's our job. So then we have to put certain constraints on you and that's the end of it. You said this, not us. This is not something men know instinctively. This is something that men have to learn. But hey, look, since it's ladies talking to the manosphere to say this, well, you know, we follow the power. Since it's Cynthia G pretty much saying that we don't do anything and don't build anything, no matter what we actually do accomplish and build. Assalamu alaikum, it's Scouting. What's going on, man? Alhamdulillah, I can't complain. So, since she's willing to say that and others are willing to say that, no matter what the actual truth is, there you have it. What I'm saying is that the question is not 
why would a Muslim practicing become so-called uh, red pill or however you want to label me? I would say immoral. The question is, why would women justify it? If they don't believe in it and have a problem, why would they justify it themselves? Now, that's going to be a very long recording. I hope this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.